title of this writing is Actions Lead, Reasons Follow. Out walking Snuffy the Black-Nosed Beagle many years ago in the freezing cold, the grasshopper lifted one of my earmuffs and had this to say, Actions Lead, Reasons Follow. I guess I was thinking about the hundreds of emails I used to get around a certain time of year from potential clients that set themselves up for failure even before they began a new endeavor. Their emails contained all the reasons they couldn't do something, and human nature being what it is, it rarely dawns on us that our reasons are our roadblocks. As I started to thaw out after the walk, I was again reminded of what my fourth grade teacher, Miss Wagner, told us countless times. You can either have what you want, or your reasons why not. Our mind can reason away anything, no matter how absurd. You cannot, however, reason away action. It is, if you will, a separate action. The way the mind works is that we act, and then we reason. It seems like it's the other way around until you investigate. The reason I bought the new car is because if I waited too much longer, I wouldn't get top dollar for my trade. Sounds reasonable, eh? When you go behind the curtain, you'll find that the decision was made by an oftentimes emotional part of you, and you just added a reason after you acted on the purchase. There's a technique in sales where, after the client has verbally agreed to buy, that you give them an objection to go through with the sale. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but let me flesh out the technique. It's best used when the client has to explain the purchase to someone else in the company, perhaps a higher up or a partner. Let's pretend that you sell widgets in red, white, and blue, and the client expresses a preference for blue. It so happens that your supplier has run out of blue widgets, so you offer the client red instead. He hesitates, but finally agrees to purchase the red ones. It's at this point you ask something like, What's going to happen when you tell your boss you wanted blue and we only have red at this time? He or she will say something like, Let me worry about that. You've started up their reasoning machine, and they will protect that reasoning more ferociously than a mama bear protects her cubs. They will sell it up the line. That's an upside of reasoning. So how does this apply to making any change you want in your lifestyle? You have to stop ensuring your failure by giving yourself reasons. I really want to stop smoking, but my husband will be smoking, and being around him will be a constant temptation. That reasoning gives you an excuse to fail. Your reasons become your excuses that you're already lining up to defend your failure. List all your reasons for not doing something and then remove them one by one from your list and you will have a greater chance at success. I understand the reality that if you want to be a world-class ballerina and you're over 60 years of age, it's unreasonable. But you would be surprised at how many cockamamie reasons we come up with to ensure our failure. Let the reasoning machine have its say and then start whittling them away. Then your action will have a much better chance of leading you to a new way. All the best, John.